Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro is the hotly anticipated next game by From Software and games industry legend Hayao Miyazaki. This time around players will take the role of a supernaturally enhanced shinobi in feudal Japan who embarks on a quest to rescue his master after they're captured by a general for nefarious purposes. I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat. Sekiro is Definitely a game that's not for me. After loving From Software's Bloodborne and Souls like games such as Neo, that's a barely disappointing realisation to have, but after smashing my head against the game for the past few days, it's the only conclusion I can draw. Where games like those previously mentioned kicked my face in yet always drew me back in thanks to awesome gameplay mechanics and game design, Sekiro is just a game I'm not really interested in playing at all. There are some aspects of Sekiro that I really do love. For starters, I'm a big fan of the resurrection mechanic that allows you a second chance at life when you die, especially handy if you're only a couple of hits away from defeating a tricky enemy. The lack of a stamina meter is also a very welcome change of pace, literally. And there are some really fantastic set pieces that are quite wondrous to behold. An early-ish encounter with a giant snake, for example, is absolutely brilliant. The setting, world and lore of the game are all excellent. Some of the early areas you'll explore are legitimately cool, and the friendly NPCs you meet are intriguing. Chatting with them and having them open up about their own personal struggles and deepen your understanding of the world you're in is great. But this also leads into one of my main issues with the game, how it punishes death. In Sekiro, after you die a few times, you'll contract Dragon Rot. This disease affects your NPC companions back at your home base, afflicting them with an illness that gets worse the more you die. And given this is a From Software title, you'll die a lot, which just feels sadistic, especially given that I actually quite liked the characters I was interacting with. Punish me for repeated deaths by taking away my cash, sure, but punishing friendly characters seems especially harsh. Unfortunately, especially harsh is what Sekiro seems to be aiming for. I'll fully admit that the core combat is simply not something I'm good at. The game continues the trajectory of aggression and fast pacing that FromSoft have been going on for years, with Sekiro opting for the most aggressive player style yet. In this game, fights with enemies will see you attacking their poise more than their health bar. The idea is to open them up to a shinobi death blow, an attack that will kill them in a single hit. It's an interesting system, but one that revolves mostly around perfectly timed parries that open up enemies for a series of quick counterattacks. To be successful in Sekiro, you'll need to time your blocks perfectly, so you're blocking just as an attack is about to hit you. Dodging, the way I usually play games like this, still exists, but it's only really useful in very specific situations. As someone who has never been particularly good at perfectly timing my blocks, I was dismayed to find that there are no alternative playstyles available in Sekiro. This is how you do combat, and if it's not something you're comfortable with or very skilled at, progress will be slow and excessively punishing to achieve. This opens up one of my major personal frustrations with the game, the overly stripped down progression. There are no alternate weapons, no skill trees, and no real way to power up your character. Killing bosses will net you upgrades to your healing god that will allow you to heal more often. You'll also get prayer beads that you can collect to eventually increase your vitality. And you'll also find various shinobi tools that give you access to abilities that can help you against enemies with specific strengths and weaknesses. But if you want to switch up your player style, you just can't. Nor can you level up if a particular encounter is beating your face in. Your only option is simply to keep plugging away and pray for kinder RNG. It doesn't help that some enemies do feel a bit unfair, like the chained ogre miniboss whose diving grab attack acts like a hoover that practically sucks you in even if you dodged it in time. Most miniboss encounters are painfully frustrating to fight, even without the total lack of character progression and cheap shots thanks to all of their attacks being able to finish you in one or two hits, and your only option for, say, increasing your health or progressing in the level, being to fight them. Inconsistency is also a bit of an issue. Sometimes you'll be able to stagger mini bosses if you figure out their weaknesses, but sometimes these staggers simply won't work, and it's impossible to tell if you're about to do damage or take damage. You can start with the horse of Gyubu with the firecracker tool, for example, opening up the boss for five or six free hits, but sometimes this doesn't work, and by the time you've realized it hasn't worked, you'll be lucky if you're still alive. And that doesn't even touch on Sekiro's stealth mechanics which seemed like a really neat addition at first, but after many hours, is laughably inconsistent. Enemies will be able to spot you across entire levels, sometimes through walls. 
but you can throw shurikens at one enemy from concealment and no other enemies will react. Sometimes a stealth kill will alert enemies 50 yards away. Other times you can stealth kill an enemy while their body stands oblivious right in front of you. Figuring out when it's safe to attack or move in stealth is basically trial and error with an excessively high price for failure. And those are my secondary impressions. It's definitely not for me. I wasn't even going to do this video, but for the fact that everyone is tripping over themselves to praise the game, so I thought I'd offer an alternative opinion. As someone who adores Bloodborne and other From Software inspired games, it's really disappointing. But this game just feels like a slog and one I'm not enjoying. I loved overcoming the challenges of FromSoft's previous games, but Sekiro is built around a combat system that I just don't like, with no options for progression or alternative playstyles. And unlike its genre stablemates, it just feels like it's difficult for the sake of being difficult. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you've enjoyed it, please keep it here at Words About Games. We've got tons, tons, tons of content, including our weekly podcast, more impressions videos, patch notes, and our weekly indie game of the week. We also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And most importantly, have a great day.